This radio mystery theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall host for certain dark and mysterious ceremonies that are celebrated regularly at this time and place. Why do we do it? Why do we teach children certain proverbs or maxims or give them various bits of cautionary wisdom which in actual practice prove at worst to be false and at best irrelevant? For instance, we say, all the world loves a lover. Really? Half the people in his own hometown were out to kill Romeo. And how many friends did Don Juan have? The truth is, being a lover can turn out to be the most hazardous occupation of them all. Oh, my darling. I beg your pardon. My beloved. You must be making a mistake. It's no mistake. No mistake. I love you. I've never seen you before in my life. I adore you. Please, this is a public place. People are staring. Oh, hold me. Now, look, oh, lady. Kiss me. I don't even know you. Love me. Love me. Or I'll kill you. Our mystery drama, Demon Lover, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Painting may be the least expensive way to improve the appearance of your home. This week, True Value Hardware Stores make it even less expensive. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you it's National True Test Paint Week at True Value Hardware Stores. That means right now True Test Paints are selling at their lowest prices of the year. True Test Standard Interior Flat Latex is just $4.97 a gallon. It gives a soft, velvety finish to walls and ceilings, covers most surfaces in one coat, and comes in white or eight colors. True Test Standard One Coat Ceiling Latex provides ceilings with high hiding suede tone finish that won't turn yellow. In white only, it's just $4.97 a gallon. And True Test Standard Latex House Paint is just $5.99 a gallon. Its low sheen finish hides irregularities. And it comes in white or four ready-mixed colors. Get True Test paints at their lowest prices of the year during National True Test Paint Week at participating True Value hardware stores. Just tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Why are so many love stories written? Well... Writers love them. A writer doesn't have to prove or justify anything as far as love is concerned. His characters fall in love because he commands them to, for any reason or for no reason. And isn't that also the way it is in what we are pleased to call real life? Look at some of the romantic combinations of your own acquaintance. Can you figure them out? Why do people fall in love? Here, we deal in answers. And so, we're about to meet Professor Albert Morrison. It's two in the morning. I know it is two a.m., even though there is no clock in the room. And they've taken my wristwatch from me. There was nothing malicious about that. Evidently, they fear I could break the crystal and do myself some injury. Of course, I could ring for the uh, orderly. And he would tell me. The big heavy one, Joe. He's on tonight. And for all that he looks like a gorilla, he's really very kind and gentle. But I don't have to ask anyone. I can see the sky. And I can tell by the location of Cassiopeia. You see, I can center the whole constellation between the two middle bars of the window. Well, it doesn't really matter what time it is. I don't think I'll be going anywhere. But the fact is, I am right about the time because I hear Joe outside with my two o'clock medication. You asleep, Doc? No. I got your pill. I spiked some grape juice for you. Thanks, Joe. You know, you're supposed to drink it with water. 
but I know how much you like grape juice. You're very kind, Joe. I, I, I think you're getting a bum deal. You know, after all, what'd you do? You killed a dame. Well, yeah, so what? One less dame in the world. Who's going to miss her, huh? Doc? Yes, Joe? I, I quit fighting City Hall. City Hall? Yeah, the wheels. You know, the establishment. Ah, you know what I mean. Look, they want to think you're nuts? Okay, leave them. Go along. Play ball. Then they'll say, oh, well, we got to give him therapy and return him as a useful member of society. You follow that? Yes, I think so. And so you play the game with him for yeah, a year or two years. Yeah, just to make it look good. You follow that? Huh? And before you know it, you're free. You're out of here. And it's like nothing ever happened. And believe me, Doc, in your whole life, nobody's ever going to give you a better chunk of advice. Thank you, Joe. Now, tomorrow, I got it through the grapevine... You're getting a new doctor. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody who wrote a couple of books, and so she's suddenly a hot property. She? Yeah, Dane. So, she'll be out to score points. So just lead her along, you know? Leave her find out uh, you ain't with us. Look, Joe, I can't play a role. The truth the is truth. that... The oh, truth. That's the trouble with you educated guys. You worry about the truth. being given a new doctor. And a woman doctor. I don't like this. I was feeling very comfortable with Dr. Radar. Is that why we're changing doctors? Because I'm comfortable? Oh, listen to me. I'm becoming paranoid. Actually developing a persecution complex. These people are only doing what has to be done. After all, according to the circumstantial evidence... But why a new doctor? And why a woman? What kind of game is she going to play with me? I've already told the entire story, Dr. Mallow. I know you have, Dr. Morrison. It does seem odd that we call each other doctor. I have a PhD in astronomy. I don't insist on being called doctor. Nor do I. But since I am the patient, it is altogether fitting that I call you doctor. You are the patient, and I... And the doctor. Why? Because these are the roles that have been assigned to us by society. Who knows? It is entirely possible that I shall be helped more than you by our sessions. I see. A brand new technique. Why do you say that? Oh, I've become an authority in psychiatrists. We have the austere ones, the friendly ones, the clinical ones, and now you. How do you classify me? Well, you seem to be a uh, we're-both-in-this-thing-together type. Well, we both are. Tell me, what happened? Doctor, why do you persist? Why do all of you persevere in this pathetic little game? I'm not aware that it's a game. I was under the impression that absolute truth between doctor and patient is the cornerstone to any success in this type of relationship. I am new to this case. I have no preconceived... You're saying you know nothing about me? Nothing. Am I to assume that you never have read the papers, looked at a news program? The news media can only examine the skin of the orange. What lies beneath is beyond their capabilities. I see. We have here a phrase maker. It's the truth. Therefore, you intend to peel me as if I were an orange, to reveal my hidden juices. With your help. Doctor, why aren't you honest? Why doesn't everybody come clean... You're out to prove I'm crazy, and you know it. We'll play the game. But I'm sane, Doctor. I am as sane as you are. You could be making a self-damaging statement. You know you're very soft and very gentle. With just a touch of wry humor. Very much like Dorothy was. Same blonde hair. Dorothy. Is it possible... Are they that diabolical? Who is Dorothy? My wife. She was my wife. She died five years ago. She was the only woman I ever loved. And I remind you of Dorothy. In many ways. So they have found what they think is a psychological softening up process. They'll expose me to you. It won't work. I'm sane. Tell me what happened. For the 987th time... I was in the Logan cafeteria in the faculty administration building when a woman I had never seen before in my life threw herself at me. Don't just tell it. 
try to relive it. Try to reveal to me what it looked like, felt like. All right. It passes the time. I have already said I was in the Logan cafeteria. I generally don't eat there, but on Fridays, they have New England clam chowder. So I bought myself a bowl, and I found a quiet table, and I was enjoying my clam chowder. It was thick with large, succulent clam chunks. God was in his heaven, and all was right with the world, when suddenly she hurled herself at me, knocking the clam chowder to the floor in the process. I remember I said, Madam, please, but... She threw her arms around me, began to cover my face, mouth with kisses. Oh. Please, madam, please. Oh, I love you. you oh, I love you. You must be making a mistake. Darling, darling, darling. What please. is the meaning of this? Please, who are you? I must have you. Always. Madam, are you are. This is certainly some mistake. No. Now, no, please. No. Don't push me away. Take me. Love me. You have confused me with someone else. No. No, I know who you are, what you are. Now I know why I was born, to love you. I tell you, this is all a mistake. I wouldn't want you to make... Love me now. Look, can't we discuss this? Love me here. Rationally, love please. Me. We are starting a scene. People are looking. I all don't over. care. I defy the world. Please. I don't care. Excuse me. Please, excuse me. Love me. Please, will you excuse I me? I adore you. Excuse me. Somehow I broke away from her. I ran to the door into the street. I ran all the way across the campus. I didn't stop running until I came to my apartment. When I arrived there, the phone was already ringing. Hello? Morrison. Morrison, this is Clemens. Yes? Clemens. Jim Clemens. President Clemens. Oh, y yes. Yes, sir. Get over here to my office at once. Uh, Jim? Mr. Clemens. The President Clemens, sir. Oh, boy. Um... Well, Doctor, when the president of the university says, get over here, you get over there. And I did. And he was loaded for bear. He harangued me for ten solid minutes before I could get a word in edgewise. And when I finally did, he refused to believe it. You expect me to believe that. It's the truth. Now, I warn you, Al, don't insult my intelligence. I know how you feel about me. I know how you all do. I got the job because I know how to raise money, not because of any intellectual brilliance. Now, you look down on me, but don't you think you can take me in with a story like that? I haven't told you a story. I said I never saw that woman before in my life. Well, that's a one-sentence story, and it is a lie. I was sitting there minding my own business, enjoying my clam chowder when this woman attacked me. <sighs> okay, okay. I, I expect trouble with my political science people, with my arts people. But you fellows, you astronomers, you, you never bothered anybody. That's not true. Galileo and Copernicus presented the authorities with a great deal of trouble. I, I mean in 400 years. Oh, Al, help me out. What are you talking about? Her name. It's Maria Chapuchin. She's an exchange professor. She's considered the leading poet of her country. She's delicate, ethereal, shy. Clem, are you serious? You attacked her. One hundred people in that cafeteria saw her attack me. Not quite. She passed by your table and you... You seized her. Why? Because you're crazy. No, 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 you're not crazy. You're mentally unbalanced. <laughs> you're having a nervous break. I can't um, believe what you're saying. Well, the exchange program between our country and hers, well, a, a, a lot of people, a lot of people don't want it to work. We can't have any scandal. You see, they love her back home. If you can't come off as a nut, we'll have an international incident on our hands. I don't care. The government wants us to, to, to preserve her reputation at all costs. How about my reputation? Yeah. We must all make sacrifices. We? What sacrifices are you going to make? Do you need a new telescope as the observatory? We can get a government grant. The answer is no. Albert. That woman is crazy. That's the kindest word I can think of to describe her. She threw herself at me for no reason at all. Think it over. Think of what's at stake. All right, what is at stake? Many things. For one, the foreign policy of our country. For another, peaceful relations with one of the most powerful nations in the world. But, most important, I would say, your job. Now, Albert, will you think about it? <laughs> It's always something to think about when the boss puts the proposition in just that light. Well, here we have Albert Morrison, a quiet, retiring professor of astronomy, locked up 
in an institution for the criminally disturbed, recounting the story of how he got there. So far, he seems more sinned against than sinning, but you know by now that you never get the full story in the first act. And I shall return shortly with the second. There I was, minding my own business, when this beautiful blonde threw her arms around my neck and started making passionate love to me. I tell you, I never saw her before in my life. This is the story that Albert Morrison, an astronomy professor, is telling Dr. Florence Mallow, a psychiatrist, in a state institution for the criminally disturbed. How did things get this far? You insist you never saw Maria Cipuccin before. It's true, Doctor. But... You changed your story. I have it here. I know. That's a lie. This affidavit of yours is a lie. Yes. Why did you sign it? They brainwashed me. Are you serious? Doctor, what do you think brainwashing is? Weeks? Months? A physical and mental torture? Until at last the exhausted and ravaged psyche collapses? No. It can be done in an hour. Even less. By playing on what a man believes in. Honor, duty, responsibility. That's what he convinced me of, finally. Don't threaten me, Clem. Before you fire me, I'll quit. Albert, please. Now, I, I wouldn't do that, but there are times... Look, look, Albert. A man has to make sacrifices for his country. The more peaceful contacts we can have with her country, the better for our economy. Albert, it is the policy of our government, our democratically elected government has chosen in relation to her country. And who are you to sabotage relations between us and them? Especially since you believe in peace. This stubbornness of yours could cost friends of yours their jobs. Now you must help us. All right, Clem, let's make sure we understand each other. We do, we do. I was minding my own business, and she simply attacked me. Now, that's what happened, isn't it? Yes, sir. But for public consumption, and for reasons that we understand, we're saying that I, I was the aggressor. Uh, precisely. Now, just sign this affidavit that you've been feeling psychologically disturbed for quite a while, and, and you request psychiatric help. I still don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Albert... We are in your hands. You must save us. All right. Well, when do I have to go to the nut house? Oh, please, Albert. It's a sanitarium. When? Well, now, I suppose. I mean, why wait? Well, I have some things to take care of. Papers I want to finish. I'd like to work on them tonight. Uh, could, could I go in the morning? <sighs> Absolutely. All right, Clem. Goodbye. Al Albert, Al Albert, I, I know how you feel. But believe me... One day, we'll both look back on this, and we're going to laugh. And that's why you signed this affidavit? Yes. Very well. You returned to your apartment. What did you do? I put some things in order. I wrote another chapter in my book, and then... Yes? Then the bell rang. I opened the door. And she was standing there? Yes. She was standing there. Oh, my beloved. Oh, no, please, I'm busy. Why, my beloved, do you spurn me? Reject me? Just a minute. Let me close this door. <sighs> Very well. We had no audience like the one in the cafeteria. You have no one to play to. Play? What is this act all about? Oh, I love you. You've never seen me before. Admit that. I love you. Look, I understand that you are the great love poet. Poetess, back in your own country. Now, what do you want to do? Get some publicity? I love you. That needle is stuck. I adore you. Why me? I have 10, 15 years on you. What do you want from me? I worship you. Fine. Let it be the way you say. Love, adore, worship. Let's assume that you fell in love with me at first sight. That happens. But I didn't fall in love with you. Take me. I don't want you. You understand? I don't want any woman. The memory of my wife is enough for me. I must have you. You speak English. Don't you understand it? I will have you. I don't want to be impolite, but I must ask you to leave. I shall never leave you. Please. I was born to love you. Can't I make you understand? It is the will of the gods that I love you. 
I shall not disobey them. What gods? The gods. Can't you hear them? No. The gods are speaking. Fulfill your destiny. Love each other. Are you sure you're not writing a poem? We must not. We cannot. We shall not defy the gods. Oh, please take me in your arms. Please don't force me to do something. There's another woman. There was another woman. She must step aside to give you up. She is dead. She claims you still. She must give way. Whether she does or she doesn't, Miss Japuchin, quite frankly, I am not interested in you that way. No other woman shall have you. No other woman does have me. Dead or alive, she shall give you up. Let me call you a cab and you can go home. This is my home. Now, just hold on. You are my home. Isn't that what the goddess Isis declared to Ra... The immortal lord of all creation? I wouldn't know. Obey the gods and love me. Now, look, I am very sorry, but I just can't... But you must. You must love me. No other woman can have you. I'll kill you first. Now, just hold on a minute. I must kill you. It's the will of the gods. That pistol of yours is small, but it can certainly do the job, so don't point it at me. Say you love me. I really can't do that. Then die. No, you don't. Now, you let go of that thing, you idiot. I must kill you. Let go. Ah! She fired at me and missed. We struggled. I, I tried to get the gun away from her, but she was stronger than she looked. It went off, and the bullet went right into her heart. She was dead. And that's your story. You don't believe a word of it. I neither believe nor disbelieve it. We have here the task of reconstructing the past. And what is the past? A series of memories that fade and become distorted with time. I don't doubt it. However, the net result of everything you'll discover is that I am a psychotic killer. That is one conclusion. There are others, an infinite number of others. According to the district attorney, she came to my apartment to seek justice. I had betrayed her love, her trust. I had used her, and then callously flung her aside. She confronted me, and I killed her. That's one story. Now... It would be better for international relations if I were a psychotic rather than a deliberate seducer. Therefore, that's the verdict you folks have to come up with. I want your side of the story. I just told it to you. No, you just showed me the orange. What's under the skin? Nothing. What are you holding back? Nothing. Then how do you account for her behavior? I'm not supposed to account for it. The woman was psychotic. Maria Alexandrovna Chiputin, 30 years old, one of the foremost poets of her country. She deals in strong modern images. I wouldn't know anything about that. She is, was a leader in the movement away from classicism. Her ideas are crisp, current, contemporary. They sparkle with the latest slang, the burst of youthful ideas. Now, how do you account for what she said to you? It is the will of the gods that I love you. I shall not disobey them. And, and the gods are speaking. Fulfill your destiny. Love each other. She could have been writing a poem. She was not writing a poem because that is not the kind of poetry she writes. She doesn't write about the ancient gods. It is a completely foreign idiom to her. I can't help it. That's what she said. But why? I don't know. Please, Albert, think. <sighs> Look, I'm tired. Tired, I'm fed up. I can't fight it anymore. I'm crazy, okay? No, it is not okay. Now, let me tell you what really took place. You see, we happened to meet on the campus grounds one night. And it was just one of those things. I, I thought she just wanted a lark the way I did. Yes. And she, evidently, she took it seriously. She was a very emotional girl. Then when I said, all affairs must one day come to an end... She made quite a scene. She actually confronted me in public. By well, the way, a hundred witnesses can tell you. She was becoming more trouble than she was worth. And so I simply lost my temper one night, and in a fit of uncontrollable rage, I shot her. For over a month, you have told an entire battery of police officers and psychiatrists one story. One straight, simple, uncomplicated story. And that story insists that she was the aggressor that you didn't even know her, that she came to your apartment and you were forced to kill her in self-defense. Am I stating the case? Yes. And now suddenly, we have a complete turnaround. 
You admit you seduced her. Why? Why have you changed your story? I suddenly decided to tell the truth. Is it the truth? What do you people want? I tell you finally the story you want to hear. The story that will be best for all concerned, and it still doesn't make you happy. I want the truth. What's important about the truth? Without it, all of us will be lost. Now, why did you change your story so abruptly? Why? Why? I can't tell you now, Doctor, not now. Don't ask me to tell you now. Because you won't believe it. How can you? I can hardly believe it myself. I've changed my story because I... Because I've fallen in love with you. Oh, I know patients think they're in love with their doctors, but I know. You're Dorothy. Dorothy, in every tone of your voice and every light that shines in your eyes. Dorothy, in your smile. Dorothy, in the way you hold your head. Your Dorothy, come back to me again. Dorothy, reborn. Why have you changed your story, Albert? Because I'm ready to play the game. The game Joe advised me to play. I'll let you cure me, Florence. I'll let you nurse my sick mind back to health. And then... Then I'll declare my love for you. <laughs> Hey, it's breakfast time, Professor. Wonderful, Joe. I'm hungry. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, way to go, Professor. Knock them all off. Minerals, vitamins, proteins. The whole joint's talking about you and, and that Dr. Mallow. Oh, what are they saying? Positive results, pal. You are now listed as a cooperative patient. You sleep good, you eat good. I feel good. Hey, Doc. Doc, keep it up. I, I mean, I mean, look, look, look. I see you finally took my advice. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the ticket. Dummy up. Don't admit nothing, not even to me. But just string her along, and you can be out of this joint by Christmas. And Doc, she ain't a bad-looking dame. And the grapevine says she goes for you. What was there in your behavior that could have inspired I don't her? know. Albert? I thought we agreed never to use that phrase. Instead, we would pause, think, and try to come up with an answer. Obviously, you were doing something to her. Yes. Something in your manner incited her to... Yes. Well, think. No. No, I better not say this. Say anything that comes into your mind. No matter how silly it may seem to be. Well, it's not something that was altogether of my doing. Perhaps another agency was at work here. What other agency? She spoke of the immortal gods. You remember she said she was following the will of the gods? The gods. But we are modern, rational people. I'm only telling you what exists in my mind. Well, enough. For today, Albert. I'm not tired. Perhaps not. But I am. Yes, I can see that you're tired, my darling. And it's because we are no longer patient and doctor. But lovers. Lovers. Not one word of love has been spoken between us, but each of us knows how we feel. And soon. Soon, my darling Dorothy. I mean Florence. I can trust you with the answer. Because, you see, my dearest, I know the answer now. I know now why that woman threw herself at me. I know why she had to kill me. And very soon you'll love me enough so that you'll believe me. Very well. What does he know? Does he really know why poor Maria actually threw herself at him? If he does, he knows more than we do, and even more than she did. Well, all knowledge is usually revealed in the third act, and I shall return shortly. (laughs) 
There are many aspects of love. And at this time, we deal with love not as a sweet, sublime, satisfying emotion, but as a violent, destructive force that brings sorrow and death. We can't help these things. It's how matters work out for some people and how it has worked out so far for Professor Albert Morrison. Suddenly, it all falls into place. It's remarkable how so many discoveries occur in a sudden flash of insight. We stagger and stumble in the dark, and without warning, the white-hot idea illumines every nook and cranny of our consciousness. I know why that Maria became infatuated. No, not infatuated, fell in love. Not even fell in love, but was consumed. I know. There's only one answer. And it was so obvious. All the time I was wearing the sweater. Dorothy, sweater. Dorothy, even in death you'll be the one to save me. Remember that sweater, Dorothy? Remember, it was my birthday. I hurried home because your gift was always sure to be something wild and wonderful. Happy birthday, darling. What? What is that? <laughs> what do you think? It's a sweater. Well, I know it's a sweater, Dorothy, darling, but what is that all over it? Oh, Egyptian designs. Why? Well, because they're bold and colorful and exciting. Well, I'd look like a walking tomb with all these pictures and lines. Oh, you don't like it. I love it. Well, darling, it's just that you always dress so conservatively. And you're about to change my entire image. I'll tell you where I got the idea. See, I was in the library and browsing through a beautiful book of ancient Egyptian culture and there were these fantastic designs. Well, they're fantastic, all right. Now, this central figure, this woman, she's the goddess Isis. Really? The goddess of love. She exists in practically all pagan mythology. And, and you see these little birds? Mm -hmm. And these squiggles that look like snakes and well, everything. Well, it's a message. You mean this says something? Oh, yes. If these aren't just any wild colors and pictures woven into your sweater. They, they say something definite and very interesting. Well? Well, you see, the translation was printed right next to the design, and it says, Memnon, an Egyptian noble of Memphis, joined the Greek general Phistos of Sparta in a war against the Scythians. Who were the Scythians? Oh, a warrior people who lived in what is now the Balkans, parts of Russia. Anyhow, our hero Memnon asked his patron goddess Isis for a charm which would protect them against the wild Scythian warrior women. Isis did reply, Weave my charm into your battle shields, and the wild Scythian women shall fall madly in love with your men. And that... That's what it says? <laughs> yes, darling. You can read it for yourself. The idea was that the Scythian warrior women would fall in love with Memnon's soldiers? And thus be conquered. They would just see this design on the shield. That's all. That would do it. Scythia. Scythia. Well, I better not wear this sweater when there are any Russian women around. <laughs> you never know about these ancient charms and things. Maybe you better not. If you want the truth, I didn't wear it at all. I was too self-conscious to be seen in it. So I, I would make excuses. The occasion was too formal for a sweater or the weather was too warm. Darling Dorothy, she understood, but she never took me to task. I always intended to wear the sweater few months after my birthday, she, she died. She left me. I must make Florence believe the story. Florence is so much like Dorothy. And Dorothy always believed me. I see you ain't touched your breakfast this morning, Doc. I am not hungry. Hey, you, you, you ain't going back to being uh, nervous again, are you, Doc? No. It's just that this is going to be an important day for me, Joe. Well, you're doing fine, Doc. Yeah, you got this rap as good as beat, you Today know. is the day that I must tell something very vital to Dr. Mallow. Oh, no sweat, Doc. You know, you can feed that chick anything you want. You know, <laughs> she dates you. Joe, huh? could you do something for me? Just name it, Doc. Look, as soon as you can, could you get over to my apartment... I don't have the key. Oh, but... I, I know where they keep your things. I can swipe it. Look, I have a sweater there with long sleeves. It's blue, red, and black, and yellow. Oh, hey, man. <laughs> with Egyptian-looking designs on it. Now, could you bring it here? Doc, it's done. 
I know it's hard to believe, Florence, but it's the truth. And so you insist that this charm of the goddess is what made Maria Cipuccin throw herself at you? Yes, it has to be the answer. Why? What other answer is possible? I know I never encouraged her in any way. In any way that you are aware of. She is the one who spoke about the goddess Isis. No, you are the one who said she spoke about it. I have only your word for that conversation. Florence, do you doubt my word? I thought you cared for me. I do care for you, Albert. How do you care for me? The way a doctor cares for a patient? Yes. Or the way a woman cares for a man? My personal emotions are not at issue here. Oh, they are. They are. I thought you were in love with me. Why? Because I'm in love with you. Oh. Is that all you can say? Oh? Albert, I... Oh, I... I do care for you. And I just asked you how. I don't want to go into that. Not now. Why not now? Because it's too premature. If we're in love, we're in love. How do you know you are in love with me? Love is something you know. You just know. On the other hand, you can still be in love with Dorothy. You think I am Dorothy. I know you are not Dorothy. Well, I'm enough like her. I'm in love with you. Now, getting back to the goddess, Isis, and the sweater. I was wearing the sweater that day in the cafeteria. But why? You said you never wore it. I can prove it. There were witnesses. They would testify to the fact that I wore a crazy-looking sweater. Show it to them. They'll recognize but it. But why did you wear it that day? Because it was my birthday. And I couldn't stop thinking about Dorothy. I felt I had to be close to her. And so I wore the sweater that she had made with her own hands. And there, in the cafeteria, Maria Cipuccin saw the design. Maria Cipuccin is was, obviously, a descendant of those Scythian warrior women. But we can't prove that she could read Egyptian picture writing. She didn't have to read it. Her ancestors couldn't read it either. It was the power of the goddess Isis that commanded them. How can you, a man of the 20th century, a doctor of philosophy, an astronomer, a scientist... I'm only telling you what happened. Where is the sweater now, Albert? In my apartment. I sent Joe to bring it. You'll see, you'll read the charm. You'll see how authentic it is. I tell you, Maria did talk about the goddess Isis. I don't care if she was modern. The goddess Isis possessed her soul through that charm. She lost her will, her reason. I can prove to you that what you are saying is nonsense. <laughs> that there's nothing to it. How? Come in. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the session was over, Dr. Mallow. What do you have in that bag, Joe? Uh, it's all right, Joe. Just just leave it here. Thanks. And now, please, excuse us. Uh, yes, ma'am. I said I would prove to you that this is nonsense. Now, put on the sweater. But how will that prove just any... do as I tell you. I'll explain later. <sighs> you're the doctor. All right, now. Let me tell you why your theory holds no water at all. I deliberately neglected to say something when you told me your story about Isis. Albert, if it's true, then why? Why don't I? Florence? Why? Florence, is something wrong? Oh, Albert. Oh, my darling. Oh, my beloved, Florence. come to my arms. Florence, what are you I saying? I adore you. I love you. Tell me that you love me. Yes, 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 I love you. I oh, do love you. Oh, embrace me. Kiss me. Oh, Dorothy, Dorothy, I thought I'd never hold you again. I don't know what happened to me. Suddenly I realize I can't live without you. Dorothy, you've come back. Never let go of me. Never. Hold me closer, closer. Oh, my beloved, say my name. There's poetry when you say it. Florence, oh, come say it. You're, say it. You're not Dorothy. I'm Florence. I'm your own beloved Florence. You're not Dorothy. Let go of me. Let go. No. Let go. Don't push me I away. said let I go. I love you. I have to obey the gods, the immortal gods. You're crazy. You're oh, like the other my one. beloved, hold me. Love me. Don't cast You're me You're not aside. Dorothy. I thought you were Dorothy. I was so lonely. You're mine. Mine. You belong to I'm me. I'm sorry if there's been a mistake. Isis orders me to love what you. What kind of nonsense and are you speaking? And you must love me. All this stuff. How can you, a psychiatrist, you be taken in by you it? You love me. I can't love you. I love Dorothy. Dorothy. She must give you up. No. The gods command it. No other woman can have you. I'll kill you first. You're crazy. If I can't have you, she won't have you either. I don't have to listen I to this. I will strangle you with my own bare hands. Isis. 
Give me strength. Don't try. Isis, help me to fulfill thy command. Ah. Uh, uh. You're soaking me. Ah. Let's go. Yes. Ooh. Doc? Doc, you hungry? You gotta eat. I know you hate to be fed. I'll unstrap your hands. Okay. Here. Joe? Yeah, you Joe. Oh, man. Man, you went and you did it again. I couldn't help it. It was self-defense. No kid. She was choking me to death. Uh, that little bit of a gal. She had the strength of Isis in her fingers. Yeah? I had to hit her. I must have hit her too hard. She fell back and hit her head against... Killed her like that, huh? Hey, what makes you do it, Doc? I mean, one time I dig, but... Gee, two in a row. I don't know. I just don't know. She was okay. I mean, for a dame. She worked hard, you know. she come to this country. She was just a little kid. She made her own way, you know. Got to hand it to her. You say she came to this country when she was just a little kid. Uh-huh. Where did she come from? Uh, I, I don't know. I hear it might have been Russia, Yugoslavia. You know, one of them places. Russia? What's... What's the matter, Doc? That... That was what she wanted to tell me. Yes, that was what she intended to tell him. That she was also a descendant of the wild Scythian warrior women. And see, the charm would have no effect on her. That's what she intended all along. However, somewhere on the journey between superstition and enlightenment... She became sidetracked. I, on the other hand, shall return here shortly. To the man who bought the Skyhawk, to the girl in the century. We're glad you like your Buicks, glad you set your spirit free. And to the family from Ohio, to the folks up in St. Paul. Nice to see you join us, nice to see you all. Do you know that over 400,000 people have already bought 1976 Buicks? No. No, oh, we didn't know that. You like your Buick, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. A lot? Uh -huh, yeah. A lot, yeah. Yeah. There's probably nothing you don't like about your Buick, right? Oh, I, I can't nope. think of anything. Well, we could probably even say you love your Buick, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We could say that I love my Buick. That's right. In fact, I'll bet you wouldn't trade that Buick for a million dollars. Oh, I wouldn't bet that. Oh, he bet it, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, it's a bet. Here's the Buick. Where is the cashola? Let me see it. I don't think he's coming across. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. If you've got a question about lemons, the makers of Minute Maid have the answer. If I wanted to taste a fresh lemon and didn't want to bother squeezing them, what could I use instead? Try the first fresh-tasting pure lemon juice in a bottle. New Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice. I love lemon juice, but the taste of bottled lemon juice doesn't make it in my house. What's the alternative? New Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice. The leading bottle brand contains chemical preservatives that you can actually smell. Everything I I use has to be really fresh, including my lemon juice. And you just can't put that in a bottle. We did. New Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice. We squeeze fresh lemons and freeze the pure whole juice. You buy it frozen and keep it in your refrigerator. I can't handle squeezing lemons. And for my iced tea, I need a really good tasting lemon juice. You've got it. Minute Maid 100% pure lemon juice. Delicious in iced tea. Delicious in anything because it's the only pure lemon juice in a bottle. Look for it in your grocer's frozen juice section. What is really different since 3,000 years ago? When the ancients wanted advice, they asked the oracle of Delphi, who was the priestess of Apollo. She listened to all the facts and then made her prediction. We, on the other hand, feed our facts into a computer 
and let the computer give us the answer. Was the priestess of Apollo always right? No. Is the computer always right? No. But you can always be right if you listen to us seven times each week. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Marion Seldes, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You just keep on driving down to Furnace Creek, and then I'll tell you how to swing off to where we're going. But where are we going? Well, we're going back to Bone Dry Gulch to see if I can meet up with the first desk pogue. The one I was telling you about. Near as I can figure, my great, great grandfather. But that's four generations. You'd have to be dead for nearly a hundred years. Now, see, Miss School Mom, that's something I come a long ways to make real sure of. And if I can fix it right, I'm going to make certain sure he did die good and proper. So I could never have been. You just keep on driving, ma'am. Unless you want to join the both of us. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.